I think there's a limit of a thousand, uh, but uh, the I service know, you I can join. I know people at Discord now. We can we can work this. We'll, out. we'll figure it out. All right. Uh, okay. Cool. So uh, yeah. Um, hi everybody. Uh, my name is Moshe Zadka. I'm one of the organizers here. So now I'm talking as a speaker. Uh, my website is cobalism.com, where you can find every way of getting in touch with me, known to humankind. And today I want to talk to you about how to use Jupiter for DevOps. Uh, I want to start with an acknowledgement of, acknowledgement of country. I live in Belmont in San Francisco Bay Area Peninsula, which is the ancestral homeland of the Ramaytush Oholoni people. So Jupiter for DevOps, right? It sounds weird, right? Like, you know, why would we do that? Um, and I want to convince you that this is a great idea. Um, so if you think about it, like, you know, who are the classical users of Jupiter? Uh, data scientists. What kind of stuff do data scientists do? Well, they, you know, need to first explore the data, figure out, you know, what the stuff is, figure out, you know, which things make sense. Um, after they do that, they need to automate whatever they've done. So when, like a new batch of data comes in, they can repeat the experiment. Um, and finally, they, they're worried about sharing that, right? Like they want to share that with the other people to explain what they've done. What the DevOps engineers need to do? Well, they want to explore, right? When you have a problem or you want an issue, you have to figure out which machines you have or like what the problem is. Um, once you do that, you need to automate that, right? You want to make sure that you can do that over and over on all the machines, on all the repos, on whatever. Um, and finally, you need to share, right? Because next time it's going to be someone else's turn, it's going to be someone else on call. You want to teach them. So, you know, similar. Um, needs. So uh, Mark is uh, showing how to use Jupiter to uh, do a stage, which is, as we know, all know the cause of and the solution to uh, every single DevOps problem. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, luckily, Python has a great library called Paramico. So you can just import Paramico in your uh, Jupyter uh, SSH in. You have to like disable the recent host key policy to kind of simulate the same experience you get in the command line, or if you have civilized, you know, figure out how to make sure that you sync the host keys ahead of time by some out of band uh, issue that I've never actually seen anyone do. And then you can just connect, right? You need to like put a lot of parameters, like where to get the keys and all this stuff, but you can connect. In this example, I connect to local hosts and you can execute a command. Well, that seems like a lot of work, right? Like, you know, you can just, you know, open bash, uh, do SH, localhost, S. Why do all this work? Well, because we live in, you know, the 21st century, right? You don't have one computer. You have tons of VMs somewhere, right? You're probably going to need to run this command across all of them to figure out which, where the file that's like, you know, going to write. Well, luckily, this is Python, right? So I can just uh, have a for loop on top of it, indent it a bit. And that's it. Like I, I ran my LS across like a whole bunch of machines and got, you know, in this example too, because I was uh, limited by the uh, size of the simulation. But, you know, if you want to have like, you know, 50 machines, you can grab files from all of them and figure out what is the list of files or like where is like the, you know, which thing has the core file dump that I need to remove or whatever it is that you need to do. And you can repeat that, you know, uh, again and again. So that's pretty cool. Well, uh, but like, you know, now again, uh, nowadays we work a lot on the cloud, right? All the clouds have web UIs, right? So they can just, you know, like go on the web UI and like, you know, click buttons and do stuff. But, you know, that's not going to be at all repeatable. You don't document what you did. It's a good chance that you won't even remember what you've done, right? So that's not great. No, you know, most of them have like, you know, decent CLI tools, right? AWS CLI or G Cloud. You can just, you know, write stuff but then you're gonna learn that like you know being a bash programmer is not as much fun as you thought when you start this whole exercise uh, well you know okay fine i can just write a python script right why do i need jupiter well because if you start to automate your cloud with a script there's a problem with your script oh man like you you, you dump your entire bucket and you kill like you know 50 vm not great right so you want to go slow you want to try it on a little bit and then when it works, you kind of, you know, explore how to uh, repeat that. So, uh, actually, all the modern uh, clouds uh, have pretty good APIs, right? In this example, I'm using uh, S3, which is actually not AWS specific anymore because by now, like, there's like 300 clouds that support completely backwards compatible S3 implementation because it's a pretty straightforward service. And this makes it easier for people to write these things. So, by now, S3 is kind of a de facto standard, weirdly enough. Um, and so, let's like, you know, just create some contents in memory, push it to a bucket. That works great, right? Um, 
So, you know, you might want to do that, right? If you, if you have a bucket that's like, you know, priming, like, you know, with like some cool things while that some other thing is using, because like, you know, that's the usual setup of like DevOps environment. You know, that's great, right? But like, you know, again, you probably need like, you know, 50 of those because there's like 50 variations and you need like, you know, kind of special things in the configuration file. Not a problem, slap a up on top of that. You, you know, in this example, just numbers. And that's it, like, you know, I uploaded uh, uh, 10 files to the cloud, you know, same effort I could, you know, one, one file, right? So this is, this is pretty cool, right? And this is really, really useful, right? Like, you know, when I'm done with that, right? I have a Jupyter notebook that documents what I've done. It can document like the failed experiment. It can document, you know, the proof that I've done what I, I am supposed to do, right? If I'm like really responsible, you know, I'd also have another loop that goes over the bucket and checks that it has the right files and they have the right content or share sums, right? So people can verify and that they have the Jupyter notebook, right? And if I've done that because I'm fixing an issue, right? I can um, do a lot of stuff, right? Um, another thing that's like, you know, nowadays a lot of DevOps people have to do is um, work on source collaboration platforms like GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, right? Your team probably has like, you know, 30 or 40 repositories because at this point, like, you know, they have like one for the Python library and one for this service and one for this service. And at some point you want to like, you know, standardize your reasons, right? Someone said, you know, like, look, you know, getting a new project is really hard because people just dump tons of stuff into the readme. It's really hard to read. Uh, let's make sure that we check and, and tell all the people whose readmes are too long to like, you know, minimize it and move stuff over to like a reasonable documentation platform so people can get it. Um, I'll give my example on GitLab because it's the only open core uh, platform. So you can actually run like the so open source version for free. So again, you know, you have a lot of multi-repo management that you need to do. Um, so again, you want to grab like a token and connect to that. Uh, and I'm, you know, it's pretty easy to grab the details for the readme, right? And then, Check how many words are in it. Okay, that's a thousand words. So that's okay, right? That's within our guidelines, right? And again, I could have, you know, gone to the README, copy pasted into W3 minus C, but that would not be very useful when I need to do it for like, you know, 10 or, you know, in this case, two, but, you know, there we did. Right again, I just, you know, embed everything, slap a for loop on top of that, and now I can get you a list of like, you know, which projects have too many words in the readme so that you can, you know, go to the team or file a ticket or whatever, right? And, you know, I, I kind of joked around with the readme, but imagine that like in real life, you sometimes have to like, you know, analyze which projects are you still using Python 2, right? This has been a thorny issue that for many of us, right? Again, you can use the same kind of thing, right? If you know that like, you know, you wanna go into like, you know, their CI and check if they're using Python 2 or whatever, right? Or you wanna check, Anything like that, right? You can easily like just automate that from this. So, you know, that's why it's uh, really, really valuable to use Jupyter for DevOps, right? You can prototype, right? You, on the first repo, on the first VM, on the, on the first uh, um, um, file that you need to upload to the bucket, you can try it out a bunch of time, right? In worst case, you've only destroyed one of those, right? You know, usually you can do or you do it against dev server or something like that. Uh, you iterate on your prototype until you make sure that it absolutely works, right? And again, you can kind of do a slow rollout with the iteration, right? I get to work on one, but maybe like, you know, when I do it on five, there's gonna be some edge cases. It's fun, I'll write on five and then write for the next 100 repos or on the next 100 VMs. Uh, and other than that, right, I can just, you know, roll it out for everything, uh, uh, automate. And then it also serves as a document, right? Um, Again, imagine that this, like the result of the, this is the, the original issue was um, um, an incident, right? You want to have good documentation for what you've done with the incident. Well, you can take this notebook, you can add markdown cells and explain why you did that, right? Why you thought this was an interesting idea to explore, but it was a red herring, right? You can actually tell the story after you have all the code there, you can add it to the story. and. It's a notebook, right? You can export it to HTML, shove it into your incident management system, and now you have a document of what you've done that serves as inspiration for your incident report, right? Or whatever it is that you've done. And you can share it, right? You can share it both in the notebook form, right? Which means the next person who has a similar issue can grab your notebook and reuse any of the cells that you've done. And you can export it to HTML and share it, you know, again, like, you know, attach it to something or export it to PDF and put it in some place so that people can read and understand what you've done, right? So um, it is a really, really good tool to uh, make your DevOps, you know, kind of like up one level. Um, so that's pretty much it 
That's all I have to say. Um, so, uh, if anyone has any questions, I'm happy to talk about that.